Hey everybody, this is Jeff Posner from the YouTube Developer Relations team, and today we're going to cover a topic that's of particular interest to folks who are going to be migrating from the older YouTube Data API version 1 or version 2 to the newer YouTube Data API version 3. Uh, we certainly encourage everybody to start that migration process if they haven't done so yet. And uh, the topic we're going to cover right now involves registering for an API key to use with version 3 of the API. Um, this is something that all developers will need to do, uh, either registering for an API key to do read-only access to the data API, or registering for an OAuth2 credential if they're going to make read-write access calls. Uh, we have some other shows uh, that we could include a reference to if you look at an annotation down there at the bottom uh, for registering for an OAuth2 identity, but we want to talk about how you could actually register for a simple read-only browser key right now. Uh, unlike version 2 of the data API, there are no more anonymous API calls. So even if you're doing something simple, like getting information about a video or getting all the uploads in a specific user's channel, you do need to register first. Uh, fortunately, though, the registration process is quite lightweight. And you can do it using the Google Developers Console. So let's switch to the screen sharing right now. and. I'll walk you through the process. So we get here right now by going to uh, cloud.google.com slash console. And it takes you to the screen, assuming you're already logged in to your Google account. Uh, I have a few projects that already are, exist in this, in this uh, account, but let me just click the Create Project button to walk through the initial process for everybody. I'm going to call this YouTube API Project. And you don't have to worry too much about the project ID. Just leave it at its default. Click Create. And very shortly, I will have a new project with which I could then go and enable the YouTube Data API, which is the next step in the process. So get my welcome. Not sure what to do next. I am sure I want to go to the APIs and Auth section over here on the left-hand side. And I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and look for the YouTube Data API version 3. Uh, if you did want to use the Analytics API, also you could enable it at this time. But I'm just going to click the Off button to toggle that to On for the Data API. And if I scroll back up here, I'll see that it's now on. So that's great. So with this Developer's Console registration, I can now use the Data API. But I need one more piece of information in order to start making those read-only API calls, and that's the API key. And I can do that by clicking on the Credentials section over here and going to the Public API Access and clicking on Create New Key. Um, so let's say, hypothetically, that I'm going to be doing uh, these calls from the context of a web browser, making some JavaScript calls. Uh, in that case, clicking on Browser Key is appropriate. If you're going to be doing these read-only calls from some sort of you know, more server-side script, you could click on Server Key. Uh, I have the option here of making it so that the API key can only be used when the JavaScript origin is a specific whitelisted domain. Um, this is a security feature, a way of protecting your key a little bit. Uh, it's not something I'm particularly worried about right now, but you can fill in the actual domain for your website if you would like to. So I'm just going to skip that and click Create. And you'll see over here I have an API key and information about any refer being allowed, uh, because I didn't put any restriction over there. And this is an API key that I could then use to make v3 API read-only calls. So hopefully uh, that helps folks get started with the very basics. And stay tuned for more videos in the series for moving from v2 of the API to v3. Cheers, everybody.